Right now, it's day three for search crews in Mission Beach who have been working tirelessly to find a missing teenager swept away by rip currents. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. The memorial for missing 18 year old Woodlane Zache is growing tonight as family and friends are hoping for his safe return. CBS 8 Steve Fiorina is at Crawford High School right now where Zache just graduated. Steve, what does it look like out there tonight? There are a number of uh, chalk markings here as well as the uh, words from so many of his classmates and friends. There are more than a dozen bouquets scattered along in front of the wall here as well as candles. Another couple of dozen lighted candles here. They've included two pictures, his graduation picture and he was a basketball star, the MVP of the uh, uh, Colts here at Crawford. Now he is uh, obviously missing the search and uh, uh, recovery. Uh, his search and rescue has turned into a search and recovery now. A lot of people still stopping by. The cheer squad, for instance, came by earlier. They picked up some chalk and they wrote some nice things here. He said, rest easy, number 21. Thank you for always having a sweet heart. Gone too soon. A number of heartfelt tributes written on here. Meanwhile, off to the coast at Mission Beach, that search and uh, recovery continued today. It has slowed down, of course. The Coast Guard and local lifeguards were involved, as well as uh, the uh, Harbor Police. And uh, some people had boats with sonar scanners off the side today, hoping to find some way of recovering his body. As of right now, though, Whittling O'Shea is uh, feared dead, and uh, the uh, services at some point in the future. Live at Crawford High School, Steve Fiorina, CBS 8. Sad story. Thanks, Steve. All right, take a look at this. About an hour ago, San Diego police chased this SUV down the 15 into Mission Valley. Uh, tonight, we're learning that there were four to six people in that vehicle suspected of shoplifting. You can see right there uh, some of the people trying to escape. This chase started in Rancho Penasquitos, ended in Mission Valley, and that is where Chopper 8 captured some of the people in that car trying to run off and escape. But there was nowhere to hide, nowhere to go, and officers did eventually catch up with them. The whole thing brought traffic to a standstill for a short time. Police say they were able to arrest everyone who was involved. A seven month old baby is safe tonight. She had been missing for nearly two months. Valentina Savian was seen last on April 17th when she crossed from the U.S. into Tijuana with her parents. We're not sure why they went there either. Investigators say agents found baby Valentina in Rosarito today, and they say she is in good health. There are still very few details about this case, but we do know that authorities say they found a woman dead in her car in Playa de Tijuana back on May 31st, though they have not released her identity or confirmed her relation to Valentina. Still waiting for a lot of answers in that case. Right now, police are searching for this man in the Lemon Grove area. They say he shot someone earlier this month. These images are from San Diego trolley surveillance footage. They're pretty good images. If someone knows him, they would be able to recognize him. Now, the shooting happened on Wednesday, June 1st. At the intersection of Broadway and Buena Vista Avenue, police say they found the victim shot in the leg. He is expected to be okay. If you know who this man is or have any information about the shooting, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. The number there on your screen, 888-580-8477. You could be eligible for a reward. Tonight, it's getting more difficult to buy a home as if it wasn't tough enough already. Mortgage rates jumped by more than half a percentage point this year, three quarters of a point, according to Freddie Mac. It is the largest one week jump since 1987. Mortgage rates this week are 5.78%. Last week, they were at 5.23%. Doesn't look like a huge difference when you look at the numbers, but boy, it makes a difference when you're paying that mortgage interest. That number was just 2.93% this time last year. I think it did some math. I think it translated to about $1,200 just in your mortgage payment for the average home between now and January. That interest adds up over the years, too. Quickly. And the housing market is changing as well for people who are trying to sell their homes. Here in San Diego, home sellers are being directly impacted by yesterday's interest rate hikes. CBS 8's Heather Hope has what experts are saying are the reasons that homes are staying on the market longer. 
And I'm outside a home in University City that just sold this week for $1.79 million, and that was the full asking price. The realtor tells me that sellers today aren't getting nearly what the top asking price that they're asking for due to interest rates impacting what home buyers can afford. So the houses stay on the market longer because it's more difficult to find a qualified buyer. San Diego Association of Realtors President-elect Frank Powell sold this University City four-bedroom home with a waterfall pool in a little over a week. But he says now he's seeing more and more homes not sell as quickly as they did earlier this year. Now we're seeing days on the market, 20 days, 25 days, 30 days. That's an indication that everyone realizes you're pricing it too high. Financial advisor David Reyes says the interest rate hikes are increasing some homeowner monthly payments by 50%, and that interest rate is only expected to get higher in the next six months. With a median home price of a million dollars, and let's say you put 20% down, so you have now an $800,000 mortgage, and your payment, you know, just a few months ago would have been about $3,400 for the mortgage payment, not including tax and insurance, but today, rates going from around 3% to 6.5% today, which is about the average mortgage rate, you're now talking over $5,000 a month for the same house. Reyes says first-time home buyers are getting hit the hardest since they may no longer qualify to buy a home. When you raise interest rates, what happens to your debt? Your payments go up. For those looking to buy a home, Reyes suggests holding off. He says it is more of a seller's market, even if sellers aren't getting multiple offers like they used to. You can look back even a month ago and go, well, the house down the street sold for 200000 above asking price. Those days are gone. Powell says he's seeing many sellers drop their price dramatically, but he advises don't chase the market, but do one big drop and leave it there for a while. If you're going to sell your house, I say sell it now because by all indications, it seems like the interest rates are going to continue to climb. Heather Hope, CBS 8. A disabled veteran reached out to us about a billing issue he's been having with an ambulance company. He got a bill for an ambulance ride he took back in April. He says the VA is supposed to pay for it and that he can't afford it. CBS 8's Brian White spent the day working to make sure this veteran isn't stuck with that ambulance bill. These are the two invoices that I received for the $2,758.71, asking for payment in full. Disabled veteran Frank Taylor received these bills in the mail from the Falk Mobile Health Corporation, San Diego's new ambulance provider. We live paycheck to paycheck. I penny pinch, cut coupons. I rely on the VA to help me with all 100% of my health care. It all started on the morning of April 3rd when Frank's husband, Byron, woke up and found him unresponsive. They said, Frank, wake up, wake up, wake up. I had a glass of ice water and I went and picked it up, threw it on him, just nothing happened. So he called 911 and paramedics in a Falk ambulance responded and took Frank to the nearest hospital, Kaiser Permanente, a half mile away. <coughs> I kept telling them was that he was VA and that they would completely cover this 100%. I said it about four times. A month later, Frank received a $2,700 invoice for the ambulance ride. So he contacted Falk and the VA and thought he cleared up the confusion. But he received the same bill again a couple days ago. Now he's scared this could go to collections and affect his credit. I don't know and I don't trust them right now, so I don't want to find out. If this goes to collection, I'm not sure how I'm going to get out of that. Frank recovered in the hospital for six days and he was eventually diagnosed with small vessel disease. His bill with Kaiser was over $40,000. The VA paid that no problem. You're telling me that this ambulance company can't generate an invoice for $2,758 so they can get paid and take the stress and anxiety off me. So Frank filled out a consent form so that I could bring his billing issue to the attention of management here at Falk headquarters in Kearney Mesa. Managing director Jeff Baim told me that they didn't intend for this to happen and they'll be straightening it out with the VA and he thanked him for his service. And I'll reach out to him uh, just to personally apologize for any inconvenience or any stress this may have caused him. Certainly wasn't our intent, but it happens from time to time and we were glad to be able to work it out with uh, the gentleman from the VA. Working for you in San Diego I'm Brian White for CBS 8. Thanks, Brian. And don't forget, here at CBS 8, we're working for you. If there's an issue you'd like us to look into or a problem, please email us at yourstories at cbs8.com. 
Vice Admiral Michael Boyle is now in command of the U.S. Third Fleet from Vice Admiral Steve Kohler. Boyle previously served as the Director of Maritime Operations at U.S. Pacific Fleet before taking command today. Kohler took command of the Third Fleet last June. He will now serve as the Director for Strategy, Plans and Policy. The Third Fleet is made up of more than 68,000 people, 100 ships and 400 aircraft throughout California, Hawaii and Washington State. A former sheriff's deputy who pleaded guilty to sexually assaulting young girls is going back to court for a lighter prison sentence. Jalen Fleer was sentenced in 2021 to 12 years for molesting four girls and contacting 41 other underage girls for sex. A judge ruled that Fleer is entitled to resentencing under SB 567, which limits the use of mandatory minimum sentences in California and took effect in January. The case now heads back to the trial judge. Two men accused of setting off a pipe bomb at a Kearney Mesa hotel face two years in prison if convicted. Today, 39-year-old Grover Everett and 30-year-old Han Sarda pleaded guilty to three felony explosive charges. Prosecutors say the two men let off a pipe bomb at the Four Point Sheridan on Arrow Drive back in February. They are expected to be sentenced next month. The San Diego Community College District is getting set tonight to offer more classes with free textbooks, both print and online. The district just got a $975,000 federal grant to expand the existing program they have. Representative Scott Peters helped secure the funding. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says students spend on average $1,200 a year for textbooks. The district says this will help more students get an education. Tonight, Pacific Gas and Electric is taking action to prevent more devastating wildfires. Right now, they're working to bury thousands of miles of power lines underground. This is all an effort to avoid shutting down power during hot and windy weather, which are catalysts for fires. The utility once considered the project too costly, but changed its mind after old equipment caused several deadly wildfires up in Northern California. A local father wants to warn others about potential scams. Sean Mahoney's seven-year-old daughter Layla is battling a rare form of brain cancer. We first introduced you to Layla last year when she was diagnosed. Now, her father tells us he thinks someone was trying to steal donations made to their family to help with treatments. He created a GoFundMe page for his daughter and one day received a call from someone saying they wanted to help. The person on the phone offered to go to local businesses and collect cash or checks, but didn't provide a name or social media profile. Be aware of these things and, you know, funnel everything to one source in one source only. We have a link posted to the family's real GoFundMe page. If you'd like to help read more about Layla's story, visit CBS8.com.